guys, how are you going? Hope you're all doing very well. This afternoon I'm going to be doing another movie review, so hopefully you find this one interesting. This movie is a murder mystery slash horror film from the UK, English language, released in the year 2016, directed by Juan Carlos Medina, and this film is called The Limehouse Golem. So The Limehouse Golem is set in the 1800s London. You've got the serial killer nicknamed The Limehouse Golem, who's creating a lot of panic because they're basically picking off their victims in very horrific ways. And so the, the authorities are always one step behind. They seem incapable of stopping this killer, which in turn frustrates the public. They want answers, and so out of desperate the authorities hire the services of an inspector whose job it is to stop the killer from picking off the next victim. So in order to do that, he starts interviewing some people that he believes might be connected to the case, but then he also takes an interest to a separate case involving a woman that has been accused of murdering her husband. She says that the husband killed himself, but there's evidence to suggest that maybe she poisoned him. So the inspector realises that maybe this is something to do with the Limehouse Golem. Maybe the deceased husband was actually connected to this killer. So the more he takes interest in this woman, the more the two cases actually come together and unfortunately for the inspector he's not quite prepared for how shocking the results are going to be. So what the results are and what's the store for everybody is something you're going to have to find out for yourself because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on the Limehouse Golem. Ultimately, this movie was a big disappointment because I thought it really could have been a lot better than it actually was. I thought this is a movie that looks beautiful on the outside, but it was an ugly duckling on the inside, which is something I'll go into a little bit later. But what I like about Carlos Medina films is that he can create a sense of atmosphere. Atmospherically, I thought this film was brilliant. This is a movie that is consumed by a serial killer, and you could feel the suffocating presence that this serial killer had. And so when you think of serial killers, you think of Jack the Ripper, as far as 1800s England is concerned. It's something that we have a morbid curiosity with, as far as serial killers are concerned, how they operate, what they're thinking inside their head. And there's a lot of that element in Limehouse Golem that makes this film very interesting. I just don't think the interest was really executed in a very satisfactory level after you see the end credits roll. And so as far as visuals are concerned, it really reminded me of the Sleepy Hollow film, which is a different kind of horror movie, but it had that same sense that this is a dark comic book come to life. This is a movie where you could actually feel the panic of everybody because the sweat and the paranoia was actually seeping through the screen. This is actually a nightmare caught on camera. And so when these inspectors Spectre is trying to go through the dark alleyways of London, you could feel that something was wrong. You could feel that this killer, the presence, was just engulfing everybody. And so that's something I really loved. I, th I thought as far as production is concerned, this was an absolutely phenomenal experience, and it's a showcase of how good Juan Carlos Medina actually is. His native Spanish films I've been a massive fan of, and I was wondering what he would actually do in an English-speaking film. Would he be like Alexander Aja? Would he be like these other directors who have actually sold out? But no, I don't think Juan Carlos Medina does sell out, because although the movie he's in English, he still has that strong sense of vibe. He has that strong sense of actually telling a story through its visuals. And so visually, I thought it was very absorbing, very, very arresting, and it does prevent the movie from becoming boring is because you want to know how this is going to unfold, and just that whole dream world, the whole surreal quality of the film, just engulfs you to a point where you don't really feel as though it goes for as long as it does. You've also got Bill Nighy, who plays the inspector. I think Bill Nighy is a very well-known actor. It's always good to see actors like this uh, are basically supporting foreign directors. He plays the this inspector that's a mix between Sherlock Holmes. Mate, it's kind of like an Agatha Christie, morbid version of an Agatha Christie film. And so you do have that procedural element intertwined with the horror element. I thought the horror element was actually very good. There are some pretty brutal scenes of these victims who have been mutilated. It was actually very vicious. And I think the vicious quality of the film, it was needed is because it shows you how vicious and how psychotic this killer is. And the more psychotic the killer is, the more interesting it gets and the more fear you actually get for it. And so as far as horror is concerned, I think Juan Carlos Medina really nailed it. But unfortunately, it's the procedural element of the film that really gets in the way and the way that the movie is structured. So I thought the soundtrack was very good. And as I said, the runtime, it never derails into the level of boredom. But unfortunately, the biggest problem to the film is that there is nothing to complement the beautiful visuals. It's like a book. You have a beautiful cover, but the inside contents are not that good. And so although in this movie it prevents itself from being boring, I just thought it was very frustrating. I thought this is a movie that was trying to break free of its confinements, it would break free of its chains, but it just can't quite do that. It's because it's being derailed by its very disjointed structure. You've got this procedural element that I just didn't think was as interesting as it needed to be, and it prevents itself from being a very entertaining film is that you've got this moment where it's in present day, then all of a sudden this person being interviewed will tell a story from a flashback. And some of the flashbacks are fairly interesting, especially the uh, yeah, basically the possibilities of who this killer is. But there's also a side story of this woman who is singing in this sort of uh, play that I thought was, wasn't very interesting at all. And so you've got some elements that are very good and some elements that are not needed. And those unneeded, sort of unnecessary qualities really do get in the way of the film having a very continuous fluency. And that lack of fluency in the 
film, it feels as though you stop, start, stop, start. So it really can't capture you. It really can't sustain the pressure that the movie wants, and it can't really uh, you know, keep you on the edge of your seat. And so there are moments that do keep you on the edge of your seat, but because you're going back into some of these unnecessary qualities, it, it I, I thought that it was much more of a negative than a positive. And then you've got a really, really stupid ending. I thought the ending was crap, and it was not a good way to cap off what was a very beautiful looking film, but unfortunately it just doesn't have that beautiful personality. As I said, beautiful on the outside, ugly duckling, duckling on the uh, inside, and I just thought Bill Nighy and the visuals deserved a better sort of structure as far as the formula is concerned. I think it could have been done a lot better if it was just done in a very traditional way without the flashbacks, and I thought it would have created a lot more mystery and at the same time a lot more entertainment. So it doesn't do a great job at actually uh, hitting a home run, but it's certainly worth the effort at least once. So overall, for the Limehouse Golem, going to give this one two and a half stars. Not terrible, but certainly a very frustrating experience. All right, guys, that's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, keep watching movies, and I'll see you later.